Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here today to give you the basics on how you can design and make your own character hat. And because there's so many different ways that you can go with this hat, I'm going to be doing this in at least three parts. So today is gonna be about just the basic cap itself. And I'll also be showing you some various examples of different types of character hats. And it doesn't have to be character, it can just be fun designs, palm hats, braided hats. So I'll be showing some photos throughout this video so you can get some ideas. But first, let's go ahead and get started on the basics of making the body of the hat itself and some different options you may wanna do with that. And the size hook I'm going to be using today, which is what the size I use for every single one of these types of hats, is the J hook or this is the six millimeter if you're going by that. And let's see, I have a little chart here for those. It says UK and Canada, that would be referred to as size four. So just so you know, J, 6mm or 4, depending on what country you're from. So I'm hoping that this bright green will stand out good enough so you can see what I'm doing here. Now, because of the type of hat that we're doing, it is important in this case, if you're going to add ears, eyes, or anything like that, that you do stick with the single crochet that I'm going to show you. If you're not going to be adding a bunch of stuff like that, then hats using half double crochets, double crochets are actually better for just a, a simpler hat. But because it's better to have a tighter stitch when you're sewing on ears and other apparatuses, a single crochet is the best way to go. So that's why I made this particular design. And again, this is my own design. So when you do, when I do this, I'm working in the amigurumi style, which is a Japanese art of crochet that's used for making usually little stuffed animals like some of the ones I've made. I'll put a couple of pictures here. And so in that case, when you're working in a spiral, you need to start out with a magic circle. I have a video just on this, so I'm not going to go into a whole lot of slow down breakdown on this, but and I have, and by the way, I have a whole series on Crochet 101 that I'll link to down below. For the magic circle, I'm going to go ahead and show you a couple times in this video. You're going to double wrap it around two fingers, which is the easiest way to go with this. You're going to put your hook under this loop here and grab this side, pull up a loop, then come back under, grab that again, and then pull up another loop. Basically, you just made a chain stitch. Then you're going to pull that loop off your fingers and then make your first single crochet like so. Okay. Now, once you get more skilled at this, you can actually shorten that up and use a single finger, which is what I do now, especially when I'm doing the handle covers so I can really conserve the yarn. It doesn't, you end up with not as much yarn. It's just a little more difficult because with the two fingers, it's easier to grab that. See how I pulled up a loop and then I did my single crochet or my chain. Now I do my first single crochet. Now I made this particular design so it works off of fives. So the first round I'm going to do, you're starting from the very top of the hat, is five single crochets into that loop. So one, two, three, four. I was talking so I wasn't counting. Make sure I got five. Now this is what makes it a magic circle is that then you just pull that loose end and that tightens that right up. And that's why that's important for this particular style of hat so you don't have a hole. And this of course applies to any stuffed animals. You don't want, you don't want this big old hole, which sometimes you'll get if you don't do that. Then from this point, I'm gonna increase each row by five. So the next round means it's gonna be two stitches, two single crochets in each previous stitch or from the previous round. So there's one, two, two on this one, three, four, two on this one, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now you may have noticed, again, I'm working in a spiral and you might want to tighten that up after that second round especially. You may have noticed that I didn't do a chain stitch to then start the next round. I just immediately started going around again. That's what makes it a spiral. But because of that, it can be harder to see where your rows start and end. So it is important to have a stitch marker in this case. I usually don't bother with a stitch marker until I get to 
at least round three or four. But I want to go ahead and show you this. So this, this will help keep you on track. So that right there is the end of round two. So now I'm going to start round three. I'm going to increase by five, which means I'm going to do two single crochets in every other stitch. So I'm going to start with a single crochet in this one and then two single crochets in the next one. And again, starting over, single cro one single crochet in that, two single crochets in this one. And I keep going all the way around until I hit the end. And since this is round three, well, three times five, I should have 15 stitches when I finish. Go back and count your stitches to make sure you've got the right number. So you're going to start with the one with the stitch marker. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, so the next round, obviously, I'm going to add another five stitches, so I should end up with 20. So this time, I'm going to increase in every third stitch. So I go one stitch here, one stitch here, and then two here. So that's three, four. And if you know your multiples, it makes it easy. So I know right now I'm on the fourth row, so I'm counting by fours. So there's four five, six, and then two of that next one, seven, eight, and then nine, 10, and then 11 and 12 will be in the same stitch. Then 13, 14, counting by four, so that means 15 and 16 will be in the same stitch. And then 17, 18 and then 19 and 20 in the last stitch. Now, if you don't like counting by multiples, don't worry about it. I don't keep counting by multiples when I get into the higher numbers just because it's too easy for me to get distracted and forget where I'm at. So usually by then I just count by the number, uh, the row that I'm on. So fifth row, though I would still count by my multiples, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, if let's say you get into nines and that's too confusing, just count by that particular number. So one, two, three, and then four, five in the next stitch. And then start over again, if that's easier for you. But you might wanna start up, when you start the next one, go two, two, three, four, five, because you know that you're going to end up with five sets of five, right? So the next one, three, two, three, and then four, five in the same stitch. So that right there is my first five rounds. So what you'll see here is when in your first, again, if this is for an adult size hat, but I'm going to give you some I'm gonna give you the numbers for smaller hats as well, but you'll see there's corners here. Now don't worry, those corners, they'll stay until you stop doing the increases. But if you don't like the corners at all, you can put your increases in different places and mix it up. I've done that before. I prefer on the hats to do it this way because not every round is gonna increase. And for the adult size hats, I have a total of 30 rounds, and so I'm only increasing in the first 15 rounds. After that, everything will just be continuing around and around and around. So that those corners basically get kind of rounded out so they're not as noticeable, especially if you're just using solid colors. Now, let me talk a little bit about different sizing. So I have this, this is all, you know, something I typed up years ago. And what I'll do is I'll copy this and put it in a document and then give you a link to this. So I actually have it figured out for, when I first started uh, typing this up, it was specifically for the baby ear flap hat, the owl hat in particular. That's where I first started because I had a specific request for that. So for the a newborn hat, I had to do a lot of playing around with this. The total rounds is only going to be 21 instead of 30, like with an older child or an adult. 
and you're not going to increase it as much. You're only going to increase it in the first 10 rounds. So you end up with 50 stitches around at the end, whereas the adult hat, by the time you get to, you do your last set of increases, you end up with 75 stitches around. So that's a pretty big difference. So that's a newborn. And then, you know, year to two years is going to be a total of 25 rounds. And you're only going to increase up to 60. Two to three years is 28 rounds total, and you're going to increase to 70. And then typically, even though this is four to eight, that size can fit teenagers and adults as well. It might be pretty, it might be loose on a four-year-old. It's going to also depend on the child's the size of the child's head. Some four-year-olds will fit it perfectly and some won't. So again, this is where your stitch marker, I, I find a bobby pin to be the easiest one to use because you can just push it in, pull it out. It doesn't get hung up the way like a paper clip will and it stays in place unlike certain other types of stitch markers. And anyway, so yes, increase that for according to the size that you're making. That was just to show you the starter. Now what I have here is I have the basic part of this cap that I'm gonna make, and this is gonna be a gray, pink and white kitty hat. And you can choose to add stripes for more color if you want. When I add stripes like this, if I'm just doing two different colors and I've got two rows of each color, I don't start the stripes until I get past row 20. So I've got 20 rows here of the gray. Now my last increase was back here. You can kind of tell because of the way it looks. Then it starts to go straight down after that. And then I switch to the white, but I don't cut the main color off. If I'm coming back to this color, I do not cut it off. So you'll see here, I left these loose so you can see. I did the white. I did cut off the white because once I was done with that, I knew I wasn't going to come back to it real soon. Then I did the pink and cut that off, but I never cut the gray. You can see the gray is continuing on there. And then I just picked up the gray again when I came back to it. I'm going to go ahead and show you how you pick up the color if you're going to add stripes. So let's go ahead and grab this white. Let's say I'm not, I wouldn't put the stripes at this point unless the whole hat is going to be striped. As it, for example, when I did the tiger hat or the zebra hats, I would actually do two rounds and then two rounds and then two rounds switching back and forth between the colors. So again, it's just going to depend. And I'll talk a little bit more about those stripes, but first let me show you how you pick that up. So in this case, let me take this stitch marker out because I'm going to redo that stitch. When you go to do the last stitch in the round, you start the you start half the stitch. So that's part of my single crochet. Then at that point, instead of picking up the green again and pulling a loop through that, I'm going to switch to my next color right there. Then I start my round with the next color. And just go around from there. And let me go ahead. I'm not even going to increase this. I just want to get around it so I can show you then how you'd pick up the next color or if you're switching back. So again, typically because it's a single crochet, I will do two rounds of each color to make it stand out, but not always. Okay, so I'm here, there's my last stitch. So if I'm gonna do a second, I just continue around with that, but if I'm either switching back to the, to the green or maybe adding the pink, Again, before I finish out this final stitch, I'm going to switch to that color there and then, then I'm starting the new color. Now here's a little trick. If you decide you don't want the stripe to be as wide as it looks with the two rounds, then sticking with a single, a single round is fine, except what you'll end up if you crochet normally through under both loops it'll give it kind of a almost a zigzag pattern and it might not stand out as good. Now that might be the look you want. However, if instead, this is what I do if I'm going to do just a single round in that color, is I crochet the next round in the back loop only. So I want you to see these stitches side by side. So here's the difference. These are the ones where I crocheted through both loops. 
here's the one where I crocheted through the back loop only. And it makes it not only stand out a little bit more, you get you see a little bit more of that color. It also adds a little bit of a ridge here, which can give it some more detail. Now, this is what I do, even though I do two rounds when I'm doing the zebra hat or the tiger hat, this is what I do. So every other round, whenever I change color, I still will crochet in that back stitch only so that it does give this kind of texture to the hat and really makes the stripes stand out. However, what happens when you do that is that it actually ends up making the hat longer, even if you still do the same amount of rounds, if you still do 30 rounds. So typically what I do is I drop the last round or two so the hat doesn't end up too long. Because when you do that crochet in the back loop only, it just lengthens this whole part here. Both, both loops, front and back, back loop only. I'm not gonna do the ear flaps today because not everybody likes ear flap hats. And so maybe you don't wanna put the ear flaps on. You still wanna do a character hat, but you'd rather not have the ear flaps. And so in that case, I would do a different type of border or band around the hat. And in this case, instead of having it be 30 rounds like I have here, I would probably drop at least the last round, maybe the last two in this case, because of the type of stitch I'm gonna use. So you're gonna have two strands of yarn, I recommend, you don't have to, but what this will do is will add more body to that band. And then I recommend doing a double crochet in that case. And if you like the two strand idea, you can do two different colors like I'm showing here, or you can do the same color as the hat, or you can have both strands be the same color but contrasting to the hat. And so what that'll do is it'll just give that, make that band stand out more and make it thicker and more bulky. Because sometimes when we think of the band, the band should have just a bit different look to it instead of just ending in a single crochet. And when I do the ear flap hat though, I do a different type of border around it than I'm doing here. I do still use two strands, but I only do a single crochet and a different type of single crochet. So you can see how that that looks. It ha I don't know, it just, to me, it's gonna give it a nicer look all the way around. And then at that point, let's say I've gone all the way around the hat, at that point, I can do, for an even more finished look, I can either go, I can go back around with a single crochet or I can do the reverse single crochet, which means working backwards like this. And I do show this in one of my crochet 101 videos, but I'll do a few just so you can see the look that it gives the hat. And you can also see why I recommend dropping at least the last two rounds, maybe even three or four rounds because since I'm using two strands of yarn, this is just going to be bigger all the way around than if I was doing a, a single strand. So in this case, if you're going to add this and the double crochet, I recommend dropping the last four rounds. So two for the fact of the double crochet, one for the fact that you've got this single crochet, and then one more to make up for the thickness of the two strands of yarn. So I'm not gonna go out all the way around the hat. I'm just showing this to you as an option if you would prefer to finish your hat out like that rather than putting the ear flaps on the hat on the side. And then some other options you can do with this hat is, and I'll cover some of this in, in the next video as well, but you can make, you can add a braid to the top. You can do a pom-pom on the top of the hat, which is super easy to do. And some of you may have seen how a pom-pom is made, and maybe I'll do that in a separate video. And then if you would prefer to have the whole, to have more stripes in the hat than what I did here, then I recommend, and I'll show you some photos where I've, at, where I've done hats that were like special request hats, and I started the stripes back farther. In that case, I still waited until I got past the last increase row be round because I think it looks better if you can do the stripes later in the hat. And so at that point on round 16 
on, on the older child adult size hat is where I started the stripes. And that way I could do a whole bunch of different stripes in here and then still have a solid color either the same or of a contrasting color, whatever color it was these people chose. So that's another option there. And again, you can vary the size of your round. You can do one row of one color and then do two rows of the next color and, and switch it up that way. But again, I recommend to really make those single ones if you're just doing one round. Do that stitch in the back loop only to really make that color pop and stand out much better for you. All right, well, that's it for the basic hat. Again, I'm gonna give you these numbers and I'll put that in a separate link down below. And then my next video in this series, I'll be covering how to do the ear flaps, as, which will include doing the, the border around the ear flap and the little braids. And then the video after that, that's gonna be the most involved one. I'll be talking about various different types of ears you can make, be it cat ears, bear ears, zebra ears, donkey ears, because they're all gonna vary. You know, even though they're made basically the same, some ears are gonna be longer. And I'll give you the basic numbers for those two and the type of stitch that you're gonna use. So be watching for that video to come out and I'll make sure that not only is are these videos in my Crochet 101 series, but in a series of their own just on the hats themselves. So I'll make sure to link to that full a video series down below. And if you're seeing this video as soon as it publishes, the only video you're going to be able to, to view right away is this particular one. But I want to make sure that link is in there. You'll see other videos that might be labeled as private. That is because those are the ones that have yet to publish, just so you know. And that's usually whenever you see a private video in any of my playlists, it's because I'm always about three weeks ahead on my videos. And so those are the ones that are that I've done, completed and uploaded, and they just are waiting to publish. So I hope you learned something and thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.